All right, good day. So this is part two. We're going over engulfing candles, but we want to do this from a consolidated uh, point of view, uh, where well, in the markets, when we have the consolidation, we know that there is a level of um, buyers and sellers that are agreeing on a particular price point. Also, you run out of having a true imbalance. So whenever price leaves out of area, we know there's a huge imbalance, and that means that. If, it, if it's parabolic going north or you know going long, we know that it was too many buying pressure in and there wasn't enough, not enough sellers to meet that. And then, of course, if, if price drops, it was too many sellers and there was enough buyers at that level. But whenever you have these consolidations, that means that there is some form of uh, equilibrium. That's this form of saying that the, the buyers and sellers are agreeing at that price point and they, they're willing to do some willing and dealing. Then something massive has to shift that to tip to tip the boat over to say the least all right so we see right here we got these level all right and this is what you want to do you want to really trade your engulfing bars um, out of consolidated zones you don't just want to be in the middle of nowhere and all of a sudden prices drop and then it just reverses and pivots and then just goes parabolic um that's a little bit dangerous and here's the reason why remember when in order for something to go parabolic the person or the entity that created the parabolic move, they don't make money off of parabolic moves. All right. They make money off of consolidated zones. You got to understand if something is moving massively out of a zone, there's not enough buyers or sellers or whatever in that, in those, or, or those price levels. That's why it keeps skipping or not skipping over, but it blasts through a whole bunch of price levels because there's no, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's there's not enough buyers and sellers in that area, all right? So whenever that supply and demand is uh, impacted like that, um, the price adjusts accordingly, right? Now, so right here, we had a nice well, push down. We consolidated. This was an area where some people, buyers and sellers, found some commonality, all right? We can do this. We can do that. But we know that what? there was a, a large amount of selling pressure that came in because maybe the institutions felt that there was enough buyers at this level um, that where we could sell, but we ultimately want to get off a lot of these positions. And where does, what, what do we mean by a lot of these positions? All right, well, let's, let's go back in time. You know, let's, let's look at these levels right here, these levels here, these levels here. Okay, what's happening? Is that every time you see these dips in the market, these dips in the market, it, it's because they're unloading off of these levels, these levels, okay, these levels, all right, load, loading off, loading off, okay, coming off some, coming off some, coming off. So what they're doing is they're taking profits all over the table at different levels, and that's all that's happening, right? And so it's no different than when this price is coming down here. They're still taking profits, and these profits could derive from these buying here, buying here sell here sell here sell here sell here all right go sell some here sell some here you got to remember in order for your order to be filled you have to have someone who's willing to buy if you're willing to sell so something so up here why did they have why why so all of a sudden we have this draft drastic type drop off of basically 212 pips well because there's a lot of people in the market that wasn't willing to buy at those levels so if I, if I'm a big institution, I'm sending out sales signals. Well, guess what? The price is going to continue to drop until it finds finds enough buyers. And here you found enough what buyers to where people are willing to willing deal. So we use this to our advantage to look for these consolidated zones, okay? And then if price breaks out of these zones, it gives us a sense of direction and how we could play it. And as I said before. When you do a bar engulfing bar, which means this is the elephant bar engulfs uh, the the bar uh, beside it or the zone, we just put our stop loss above the zone or uh, above the candle that was eliminated. And in this case, this candle eliminate this one stop loss here or above the level. Keep it moving. You look left and you can see where there may be some targets that we can get to. We get to this level, but we blast it through. Um, because this could have been a demand area, but instead it came down back to this area and found demand. So this is what box. This is consolidated zone. Okay. Of course, I could pull it all the way over, but we just do this to keep the chart fresh. 
what do we got right here? All right, same thing, but I can move all the way over here. So what do you notice? Demand zone, price come down here, demand. All right, but look, we're back. We're back to this level, all right? And we could see some you know, resistance points, but regardless, we're in this, this box right now. And so what are we looking for? We only, It's only two things, that, well, maybe three, but hear me out. This is what, what could happen. We could spend a little bit more time in here, and we could either do that, or we could definitely do anything like this, come back up to this area, back in this area, and then possibly drop. Uh, you could, you know, sometimes this happens and it does that. All right. Sometimes it's happy that it does that. It's a lot of alternatives, but even though we say it's a lot of alternatives, in reality, it's only really two things that can happen. It's either going to go up or down. That's it. And that's where you really so it doesn't even matter about the sideways. Regardless, is that even if you look, all right, let's look at this right here. This is the one hour, but I'm going to do something. We're going to focus on this there, and I'm going to add to a low time frame. Uh, I got to add to the two minute. All right. So now I'm on a two minute time frame. Let me stretch this out. So you see how now the market is looking a little bit different now. All right. What do we, but what do we see? We see up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So what, look, even this, guys, even you look right here, I said, like, okay, it's moving sideways. Yes, it is, but it's technically moving what? Up and down still. Still up and down. So the illusion of going sideways as if something is just a, like this, just flat. It doesn't work in a uh, in this type type of market. Something flat like that, something's very wrong. You know, that's that means nobody's buying, nobody's selling. The stock or the asset is dead. Okay, so this has a pulse. Keep that in mind. You know, as you're trading. Now, when it, um, if we know that something can only go up or down, it, it really makes life much simpler. We just got to get the direction right. And all the times to get the direction right is that what you we work, we wait on these levels to be violated. And remember, there's two ways you can take this. You can either wait what? For a retest or you can take the breakout. Regardless, you keep doing this over and over again, you're going to find success. And then you're going to find levels that where what? Sometimes you have a breakout and it fails and your stock loss get hit. Who cares? Keep it moving. Next. Some of you guys, what happens is when the stock loss get hit, sometimes you get into a cluster of losses and you think that the strategy is wrong and you're ready to switch up. Well, no, because the strategy could have been you could have had a, a cluster of good wins and you would think that you're invincible. But this happens, okay? So that's why you want to keep your stock loss uh, a, a proper uh, ratio to your risk. Now, I mean, um, to your reward. So look. Consolidation, engulfing. We got a retest right here. So you conservative traders, there you go. You get your retest, bam. But if you're not conservative or you're not patient enough, you, you don't need to take the retest. You just need to take it out. Stop loss above here. We're good to go. Now, downside, what do we have? All these levels are different areas that we can take a target, target to. Well, guess what happened? It blasted through that. But price didn't. It didn't have to do that. Nobody says it has to do that. So you got to respect these levels. So when I trade, I respect these levels. So typically, I get out of these levels. And then you'll say, man, I should have held on. I could have had this many pips. So let's do this. All right, that's 148, 150 pips. All right, well, cool. But if I got out here, it's only 46. I'm not going to beat myself up because I missed this. I got out here because I respect market structure. Meaning that that could have been an area where price could have turned around at. Because this could, could have easily became a double bottom. But price come here, bam, and do something like that. That could have happened. So this is this is the reality. Because why? Look what happened. It's right there here. Look, break. All right, why we didn't keep going lower? What happened? This, this became what we call a... Um, a diagonal or zigzag. This is a zigzag 
um, double bottom. All right, it's a zigzag pattern. So look what happened. I would have told myself, all right, got to retest, get down here. We'll get back out here in market structure. All right, that's 94 pips. We're good to go. But somebody says that I remember last time it just bounced down. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to ride it, and I'm going to get down to here. I'm going to make 136 pips. All right, so it gets, you know, we get a 94. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you may would have put your stop loss in the profit. But for whatever reason, if you didn't do that, Look what happens. For whatever reason, if you didn't move in, you just want to hold on to it, look what happens. You know, we come back, okay, so now you're only down 23 pips. That's not bad still, but uh, that's a lot of heartache to see that you was up 90-something pips, almost, you know, and if you took a standard, if you up 900-something odd dollars, and now you come back, you down $230, like that could be psychologically damaging to you. So keep it real, guys. Stop, stop playing around as if, you know, you don't have real – emotions so don't don't go for the absolute thinking that you know i'm going for the kill no be sensible in your trading and know that these levels they exist for a reason all right look we're back up here to what this is a supply area back in supply it dropped guess what happened retest and we we, we revisited all these levels look even this short level right here was respected look at this look at that what happened Price came down, found this level, and it, it, stuck, it kept popping up. So guess what happened? Someone right here, they went long, guys, and they thought it was going to push up. Well, look what happened. They get right here, it stopped, and it pressed against them and knocked them out. Now, watch this. Same thing. Price comes back down to this level, and it pushes up. So what did they do? They bought here. But it depends on wherever they're getting out at. But look at that, guys. That's 109 pips that it moved. So, so guess what happens to these traders? They remember this. Man, I went long, and then it reversed on me, and then it went against it, knocked me out of my stop loss. I ain't doing that no more. Gets here. What do they do? Oh, uh, I'm going to go short right here. I'm going to go short right here. All right, because I know it's gonna drop because that's what what that's what happened right over here. All right. It looked like the same setup. So I'm gonna do the same thing. But then what happened? It just kept pulling, pulling against them and probably knocked them out of stop loss or they, they got a severe drawdown. They don't like it. It's not a great feeling. And they just eating themselves up and they're like, I quit. I can't keep doing this because when I did it over here, you know, it didn't work. That's why you gotta stick with the same strategy and concept over and over again. It'll work itself out. So what do they do? They bought here, and they sold up at these levels. They're good to go, 109 pips. Then they finally got a drop. But then somebody over here would say, well, I just should have left my short. Or here, I should have left my short in, just had a major drawdown, and do it. But then what they don't factor is that sometimes you get these push-ups, and they just keep going higher and higher and higher, do something like this, and just keep going. And now you're going to blow your account because you're stubborn because you don't want to loss. Make it make sense. All the way to investing and trading is really about a, a battle in your mind every single day and making it make sense. Stop treating this as if this is the only lifetime opportunity you have, you know, to make money. The market is going to be here and they're going to provide you opportunities over and over again. You just got to believe that that can happen. So therefore, you're not in a rush. Let's look at another. Um, this is the one hour. This is U.S. Let's do another. Uh, let's do something like a CAD JP. Why and not a, a regular uh, USD pair. And I may go in here and do like a stock as well, too. All right. So let's look back at some of these levels. Like I said, I'm on a one hour. And all right. So we can count this as a level. All right. We got some, um, a few candles. All right. It's in this zone. All right. So this is a zone. So now we know where the market opens today in a few hours. We're looking for how price is going to react out of the zone. Okay. We know that if we could break, get up, we got to still be careful of this because this is a, a resistance area. So the risk reward may not make no sense at all waiting for a long right here. If anything, if we at least look for a short, we know we got some, some downside that we can visit that it makes more sense. All right. For our, um, when it comes to, um, risk reward ratios
All right, let's look back at. Right, so this was once a little little zone minor. Uh, this this was once one as well too. And see we're overlapping, so let's take this off. All right, so we're back. What we're back in an area where the price did break out of. So we we back somewhat supply near this area. So we really want to see how price reacts uh, to this area. All right, we've been in a, a massive draw um, uh, downtrend for a pretty long time on an hourly chart. So at least for the height from February uh, 28th, we've been in a constant downtrend uh, to March 24th. So from here all the way to here, a 679 pip drop. It's massive. All right, so, and I'm not a big swing trader, but I do one day want to see what it's like to hold a trade that long. I don't really trust it to do that, but that's going to be interesting to try that one day. All right, so we still got some levels. Uh, like, you know, we were somewhat sideways here. And see these little breaks that come up, all right? So you're like, well, how do you prevent false breakouts? All right, so here's the thing. When you go back and look at the chart, you're going to see false breakouts, but I'm not going to say they're not normal. Is that you're going to have, you're going to have a, a, a clean break for the most part uh, that's going to play out more often. Then a lot of the manipulation of a um, you know a false breakout to the upside reverse. It's going to happen, but you know um, if you like, like right here, all right. So you got this zone. We didn't really have like one of those false. You know you got these little candles here and there. This you know this one right here, a little peak or whatever. But you see what I'm saying? Stay within this range, and we get this break instead of getting a spike up and then dropping. But over here we do. We get a spike up and then we drop. So uh, people who was going long, uh, they could have uh, been in it trying to go long here. And so what do you have to do? You have to what? If you did take this trade, you know, you have to tell yourself, hey, my stop loss is below here. Now, what are some measures you can do? Sometimes you can hedge. If that happens, you say, hey, I'm going to have a short order to go short as well, too. Or you have your stop loss. You you you're, you look at your bias. You say, hey, this clearly is going to be um, a, a downtrend. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to be looking to take the trade down to the downside. So then you can make up for this loss. But once again, please stop coming through the market thinking that you're never going to take an L. And just because you got it wrong, I mean, it doesn't mean that you're wrong. It's just, it, it's just part of it. You know? you know, if you play basketball and you, you shot a shot, you missed it, man. Get back on defense and play basketball. Like, we you still got a game. You still may have 50 games left. In the season, you got you got practice, you got all kind of stuff. Like, stop being because you missed the play. So what? Come on, keep it moving. But you got these areas, and they easy to find in hindsight. But that's why it's good to go ahead and start marking them up in real time. So, like right now, we we got this area. All right now. If you get confused and you don't see enough data, sometimes you, you go on a lower time frame, see if you can get some more candles and get a feel for it. So you see what we're dealing with. And then you can reduce this down if you want to. You can do this. See now, you see what we're dealing with now? Of course, we do this. So see, this is this is more doable now, right? So, so you can do that. Whenever you feel like you get a little bit overwhelmed on a higher time frames, you can't get a beat on it. All right, go down to the fifteen minute. I don't recommend going down to five minute for this, but I mean, if you have to, it's up to you. But guess what? Do what you need to do. See how it looks a little bit different on the five minute. All right. Now watch this. You could do these levels, and then uh, let's do fifteen, and then you could put on your indicators like your double tops, bottoms, and things. You know, sometimes you'll start seeing them. So. They may not show up on other stuff, but they may show up in here. So sometimes what can happen is that you can be on a, a certain time frame and 
you go down a lower time frame, you'll see like double tops and some bottoms, but it'll be um, within inside um, like a zone. So if this was a double top right now inside the zone, it gives you a little bit more confidence that you'd be like, oh, okay, not only um, are we I have a consolidated zone, but a double top is showing up. So maybe I'll be looking to go short. So that's something that can help too. I think there was one like that on the Euro USD on a lower time frame. Yeah, so this was one right here. Of course, let me take all these off because we're on a lower time frame. Let's do this first. All right, so you see, first let me go on a higher time frame. Let's go back on the one hour. See, on the one hour, you don't see a double top. Okay. There we go. So we got this box. So what we do, we go down to the what? Lower time frame. Voila, a different world, right? So we possibly could play this, come to, down to the neckline. But it doesn't mean that it's going to happen. But I have a, I have more, I would have more confidence to say, hey, I will, I will do this, and I will put my stop loss above here. And if we get the break, we go down, that's fine. Because it's, it's, a, it's a couple of things of confluence that are showing up. You look left, we're, we're, we're try, having a hard time breaking back uh, this level because this was a area of what? Uh, this was support at one point, but then now support broke and then it's coming back and it's retesting. So is this a bear flag maybe it come down? So all these play in. Okay, now I don't know what the risk reward ratio is, but so this to get down here, so that's on like 15, 16 pips. And maybe 11 pips to the, so, you know, I don't know if this is really worth really taking the trade on, but you get what I'm saying. Um, it's up to you on that. All right, so you see you got, this was an area. And like I said, because we're on lower time frame, I don't know if this would have been uh, worth it. Like how many pips is that uh, based off of using the double ties? Yeah, that's only nine pips. So this is something you really want to even fool with it, you know, for the most part when it comes to that. All right, so let's look at one more. Mm. Let's look at Australian dollar USD. I need to start looking at the New Zealand dollar. I haven't looked at them in a while. I didn't mean to do that. I just took off all my indicators. Let me see. Whew. <laughs> Make sure they say this. <laughs> All right. All right. So if you want to, like I said, you can come down to 15. You can do all your boxes. Uh, but sometimes when you do it on the, on the one hour, it sort of saves time. And then you can break down. So you just see, that's what it looked like on a one hour. And then if you want to, you can try the four hour. But see, your four hour, you see what happened. You run out of real estate a little bit. So yeah, it's really not telling us much. Um, you know, is this really consolidation? You know, it's just like, it's just two candles, right? It looks like it wants to go to the upside, but at the same time, it keeps failing, getting pushed back. Some the bears keep winning for, uh, at the end of this, this rally. So you're going to, all right, so now we're on one hour. We see a little bit better picture, but when we get to the 15 or even the 30, now it looks a little better. So now I can see the sideways and movement. So here's a little secret. You can tell yourself, I only trade whenever, well, I only uh, trade after I see that price is breaking down of a, uh, an area of consolidation. So if you, for whatever reason, come into a market and the price is already moving into a direction, you're not trying to jump on a train. You're just like, oh, okay, hey, it look like it's about to come back to this area. So I patiently wait and get to the area. So you're what we call a structure to structure trader. You look at market structure. So this is a structure area that we're in right now. And then this is a, a it's a minor structure, but we'll go with this one. So this is another structure area as well, too. So for whatever reason, the price breaks to get up here, passes through here. You would know that hey, this is an area of a, or of influence for me that I will consider, and I will uh, wait to execute my trade based off price reaching that particular level. Here's another one right here. This is an area. If we do a bar replay, uh, see this. Like 
consolidation, break to get out. What are we looking for? Want to see if price come back and retest this area? If he do, we look take trade. If you if you uh, just are going to break right out, you're going to take the breakout. You there? You're going to put your stop loss above there. Keep it moving. Let's see what it look like. So both of you would have been good. Targets hit because we we only go to the what net line. What happened? Price came back into this area, consolidated again. All right, your stop loss protected. You didn't get hit. Was a little worried. All right, retest people. Retest. They would have got in right here, but also their stop loss is still uh, above there. So they would have had some form of drawdown, but regardless, eventually it would have came. Boom. So when y'all are trading, make sure y'all give yourself some grace. All right. Uh, you want to be able to uh, give yourself room to breathe. Everything needs to be arranged. Uh, don't think that price is supposed to be a defined area, and that's what happens. You need to get yourself breathing room because a lot of you guys are right on your direction of the trade. You had it right the whole time. And for whatever reason, of course, you probably had a tight stop loss or you got shooken out of your trade by you know going against you initially. But that's just the natural dynamics of the market of just breathing. And you got to give it a range. And in that range, uh, you know that uh, that's, that's normal. That happens. It's not that you're wrong. So a lot of you feel like you want the perfect entry where not everything is going to be the perfect entry. Okay. So, so things happen like right here, somebody could have been looking for a drop, but what happened? We get push up and then we drop. So if this person has tight stop losses or, or they don't have a range, what can happen is this little move, which the market knows that a lot of people do what they're short, they're tight. Hey, get up, collect that, then go. So you can sort of clear yourself. And if you go back on the chart, you're going to see plenty of times you're going to have it where people um, typically um, have it to where uh, there's no um, you know liquidity grabs. You know sometimes it it does what it's going to do. So if it's a true double top or bottom, it doesn't you know wick up. So that that can happen too. All right, so this is Amazon. I just finished off of Amazon. So this is a 15-minute chart. So once again, we're going to one hour, and you will look and see what pockets of, where you know, price is somewhat moving, you know, sideways, you know, right here. We had one. So we can just stretch this all the way across. So then we know that now this is a demand zone. Because why? Because every time price come in here, it's pushing out, it's pushing out. Now, sometimes when we got candles like this, I just do a regular support and resistance level, and I just know that, hey, if we break above here, these are the key areas where price can at least come back and we can get to. If we don't, you know, break and close above these levels, then we may be pushing to get back down to, you know, this downside. All right, so this is another area. What price to come to? And once again, we can go down to the 15 man. We can look and we see what we got. Okay. So we got this zone that we can play with. All right. Could this be a uh, a bear flag? Possible. All right, but you saw, you saw this too. Somebody could thought this is a bear flag. And then, you know, we gap up, we go higher. We, we didn't get it. So. Whoever look, but look right here. This is a bear flag. And it played out. All right, look at this right here. So I consider this a bear flag. I right, got your flag. All right, and then we got a nice little traditional little pole. Take the what pole. Say right here, targets hit. Okay. Now what happens? Uh, so another trader may try the same thing. They feel like, man, last time it hit, so I'm gonna go heavy. I'm gonna you know break my rules. We're gonna make it happen, and um, it doesn't work out. Even though this is not the best. 
but I could see a trader thinking that, oh, this is a bear flag. I see some little rejections. You know, hey, this is going to go down. And guess what, guys? The market knows that that's what you're thinking. You know, you're thinking the same way, too. So that's why we got to have a little bit of formal contrarian to us. Or you say, you know what? How often do these play out? And if it plays out enough, I'll be fine. All right. So this is something they would have thought that would have happened. And it was like, hey, this could have been a double bottom. You know, let me take the trade down here. The market maker said, nope, push you a good knock all y'all out of y'all trades. And then you, who won over here, you went extra crazy over here. And then now your account is in critical condition because it turned into a gamble. So then why am I talking about this now? Because this is what looks like could be a what? Bear flag. It could come down or it could push back up. So you have to be careful of that. Now, I'm not a big bear flag and flag pattern trader, so this doesn't really uh, pique my interest, all right? But, but for others, it may. All right? And then you can go on a chart. You can see uh, plenty of what, um, you know, bull flags too, you know? I mean, you can find them um, like right here. That'll be a flag. It's your pole. Set it on top. That's what it means, your target. So targets hit, smash, you know, good to go, right? But then look at this. This would be considered a potential flag as well. But like I said, it's different rules to how you want to trade it. But so with this one, it never really breaks out or anything. So you don't want to trade it. So this is where it was looking to do. But that never happened. Push down. But watch this. We got uh, – now it's not going to look like this on the 15-minute, but somebody could call this. This could be considered a uh, – so like a bear flag, you see how that looks like that. Then look what happens. Put it back right there, boom. So put it right here, targets hit. Of course you have uh, some, some pullbacks and stuff, but then it you know, eventually drops. So you gotta do a lot of patience and everything, you know, dealing with this stuff. All right, but I ain't gonna keep this video long, but I just, yeah, um, focus on your, um, your consolidated zones and how do price reacts out of that zone? Remember, it can only go up and down. That's it. It's your boy E. White. I'm out. Hit the like button. Subscribe. May the horse be with you.